This video is made possible by Away. Hi everyone! It is Wednesday of a new block. So last block I did my medicine sub eye and this block I'm doing my EMS elective for the next four weeks. And for EMS elective I'm going to be doing a bunch of ambulance ride-alongs and I'm going to be observing both BLS as well as ALS. I have a few of those coming up. I also have a bunch of interviews coming up. I know I talked a little bit about my interview process in the last video and a lot of you guys had really good questions and I wanted to kind of address them. So a lot of you guys asked about sort of the general process of match and residency interviews. So the way residency applications work is towards the end of your medical school career. So sometime during at the very end of third year or a very beginning of fourth year, you send out your applications. Most people only apply to one specialty. I know somebody asked if I'm only applying to emergency medicine. I am. I would say the vast majority of people end up applying to only one field. The reason being that when you apply to these programs, you have your personal statement, you have your away rotations, or you have your letter of recommendations, and the, all of these are geared towards the specialty that you want to go into. So it's kind of hard to prepare for more than one specialty because you're going to be writing about why you want to go into emergency medicine or why you want to go into surgery or why you want to go into internal medicine. You're also going to be doing things in your medical school career to show that that's a field that you're interested in. So for example, for me, I did a bunch of OA rotations in emergency medicine, kind of one, to experience what it's like at different hospitals, but number two, to show different programs that that's the field that I want to go into. Also reason number three being that I need a recommendation letter specifically designed for emergency medicine. So it would have been very difficult for me to apply to more than one specialty. For the most part, people apply to what's called categorical residencies, meaning you go directly from medical school into the field that you're going to be specializing in. So from going from going directly from medical school to emergency medicine or directly from medical school to general surgery. There are certain specialties that require you to do one year of either transitional year or a preliminary year of either uh, medicine or surgery. And those are things like ophthalmology, dermatology, um, maybe I think anesthesiology and a few other specialties require that you do a separate year of training before actually starting to study anesthesiology or dermatology or ophthalmology. So aside from those specialties, most people apply to just one type of specialty and that's the field that they want to go into. There are also questions about sort of the interview process and what it's like. I honestly can't speak for all the other specialties, but for the most part, from my experience and from what I've heard, emergency medicine interviews tend to be pretty relaxed and pretty conversational. You get asked for things like, what do you like to do during your free time? Tell me about yourself. Why do you want to go into emergency medicine? Kind of just basic questions. I've heard that in other specialties, you get like what's called pimped on patient cases, sort of the medical knowledge. In emergency medicine, they don't do so much of that, which is nice because you're not really being tested for your medical knowledge when you go to your interviews. I think that should come from your standardized tests scores and you know you're still a student so you're, you still have a lot to learn. So I feel like the most important thing in an inter interview like I mentioned in the previous video is for the programs to get to know you as a person and get to know who you are um, outside of these scores and the numbers that you have in your resume and your application. So those are sort of the more commonly asked things on interviews from my experience as well as from what I've read online and from other people. People also ask me what um, other people bring to the interview. Um, so I want to show you guys what I brought to my interview. This is a bag that I brought. This is just like a kind of a plain gray shoulder bag and it's big enough to fit this folio. This is a folio that I got from my alma mater when I graduated. Um, it's from Barnard. Um, basically has like a notepad and there's a little slot for you to bring in your CV or your resume and little slots for business cards and things like that. Honestly, a lot of people brought these, but there's really no use for this other than it makes you look a little more professional, I guess. So you can carry your resume with you in case you want to look over it right before your interview. I think as a general rule of thumb, it's nice to have something to write in, like a notepad or like a pen or something, just so that if anybody gives you any important information, you can write that down. If you get in touch with any resume, 
residents or any um, program directors who want to give you their email address or their phone number or whatever uh, for you to ask more questions, you can write that down. Brought my pencil case, brought my wallet, um, and most places will give you like breakfast and lunch or at least some like light refreshments So you probably don't need to bring like snacks or like water bottles or anything You can if you want to I brought a little thing of mints like just in case But aside from that, that's really all I brought with me to the interview Like I said before same thing with the outfit I wanted to have something kind of plain like a plain bag. I didn't want to have anything flashy I also didn't want to show up in like a backpack So I wanted something just like kind of nice enough doesn't stand out too much so that's the bag that I brought so the next question somebody asked was for me to um, describe the match process and it's it's a little like nebulous thing I don't know exactly how it works but I have an idea of how it works so basically when you apply to these programs during your medical school like fourth year or something some programs will give you an interview not all of them and you go to these interviews they're evaluating you but you're also evaluating them to see if you're a good fit for that program or if that program is a good fit for you and then you're supposed to make a rank list of the programs that you like so you make a rank list and the programs also make a rank list of the applicants that they like and I think there's like a computer process that's like that takes both lists into consideration and then matches you into the program that you're supposed to go to the following year so that's like the nutshell of how the match process works match day is basically this big national day where all the US medical students uh, find out on the same day where they're gonna go for residency it's supposed to be like a big day of celebration and all that so that should be exciting that's coming up in March I'll maybe try to vlog that day so you guys can find out where I'm going to um, maybe um, so that's pretty much the match process. I know there's a lot involved. There's application process, interviewing, ranking, and match day, and it's a whole big process, but it's very exciting, and you find out where you're going to spend the next as short as one year to as long as five plus years of your life um, doing your residency, so very, very exciting. So... I hope that kind of answered all your questions about the match process and the residency interview process. I'm trying to remember if there are any other questions. I will check back with more questions. So I just finished dinner and now I'm doing some reading for my EMS elective. So EMS stands for Emergency Medical Service and basically consists of all the EMTs and the paramedics who ride in the ambulance and pick patients up and provide some care. So the reading that I'm doing is basically all the protocols that's been written for certain cases like sepsis or cardiac arrest or hypotension, congestive heart failure, and there are all these protocols written by medical directors. I think it varies from state to state, but there's basically protocols on what to do, what drugs to give, how to transport patients, um, and things like that. So I just want to familiarize myself with all these things so that hopefully I'll see some cool things tomorrow and for the rest of the month, and I'll be able to kind of like jump in with like what I'm supposed to do. Technically, I'm supposed to be observing mostly, so I'll, I won't be doing anything. I won't be intubating anyone. I won't be starting lines, um, but I heard that sometimes the paramedics will let you do some minor things so i think it's just a good idea for me to know what's going on so just gonna read up on everything and i will check in with you guys later so it's getting late and i have to go to bed soon because tomorrow i have a 7 a.m to 7 p.m shift so i want to make sure i get plenty of rest for that but before i end the video i want to tell you guys a little bit about today's sponsor away and i want to tell you guys about their product so away is a luggage company and they use high quality materials they use german polycarbonate and they offer a much lower price compared to other brands by cutting out the middleman and selling directly to you you can choose from a variety of colors and sizes they have four different sizes they have the carry-on the bigger carry-on the medium or the large the one that i have is the bigger carry-on the suitcase itself has a lot of cool features like i said it's made of german polycarbonate which is very light but very strong and impact resistant the interior has patent pending compression system so you can actually compress all the stuff that you packed so that it fits and you can zip everything up it has four 360 degree spinner wheels it has tsa approved combination lock built into the top of the bag to prevent theft another bonus they have a removable washable laundry bag so that you can separate the dirty 
dirty clothes from the clean clothes. So something cool about the carry-on and the bigger carry-on that I haven't seen on any other luggage is that they have this charger that's built into the luggage itself so you can charge all your cell phones, tablets, um, Kindle or anything else that you can power with a USB cord. The luggage comes with a lifetime warranty, so if anything breaks, you can send it over for them to fix it or replace it for life. The luggage comes with a 100-day trial, so you can live with it, you can travel with it, and then if you decide that it's not for you, then you can return it for a full refund. There is free shipping on any OA order within the lower 48 states, and the carry-on sizes are compliant with all the major US airlines, so you can take it with you on the plane. And if you're in New York City or visiting New York City, you can actually visit the OA retail store and check out all the luggage in person. So this is the luggage that I used for my OA rotation last month. I have the bigger carry-on like I mentioned and it fit everything that I needed for the week while I was at the hospital. Probably my favorite feature was a laundry bag so that I could put all my laundry in there and it was separate from all my clean clothes. I didn't have to bring a separate plastic bag or a laundry bag to put all my dirty clothes in. So if you guys are interested in trying out the luggage, you guys can go to oatravel.com slash strike to fit. That's oatravel.com slash strike to fit and use the promo code strike to fit for $20 off your purchase. So I'm gonna close the vlog now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you guys have any more interview related questions and I'll try to answer them in the next video. I will see you guys next time. Bye.